Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of eCoffee with Experts. I am your host, Matt Fraser. And on today's show, we're going to be talking about how to increase your credibility and authority online, why EAT is critical for SEO success with none other than Nicola Stott. Nicola is the founder and managing director of Erudite, a fully remote digital marketing agency covering all of the UK, specializing in international SEO. She founded Erudite over a decade ago, following a position as head of search, head of UK search partners at Yahoo, where she first found her love for all things search. Her professional recognition includes being named in the BIMA, B-I-M-A, Hot 100 Digital People, winning best use of search at both the UK Search Awards and Wirehive Awards, and co-authoring two books, including eConsultancy's SEO Best Practice Guide and Hit Me, How to Get Your Small Business to Punch Its Weight Online. Nicola, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, Matt. Right on. So in regards to EAT, um, what do you think are the best ways and strategies to establish? Uh, our audience, by the way, is mostly agency owners, so they know what I'm talking about with EAT. But in case someone's tuning in that doesn't, we're talking about establishing your expertise, authority, and trustworthiness uh, for SEO. It's a fascinating area for me because yeah, this area in particular is where you really uh-huh. need to hone your skills around marketing it's it's yeah. the classic part where um technical the technical skills and everything we know mm-hmm. about that joins yeah. up those links with classic marketing and how to tell that pr side of the story if you like yeah um so so at the at the top level really yeah if we take expertise out of it for a second and, sure. and you know being good at something it is perhaps slightly different you've got to have something to be good at in the first instance but evincing or demonstrating your authority authority or authoritativeness and trustworthiness yeah. uh-huh. um is through a number of different types of signals okay so that could be through um a, a link graph if you like, yeah. a social graph, um, this concept of um, connectivity between other authoritative sources. So mm. who I'm linking out to, where I'm receiving links from. So it's really just classic kind of yeah. um, page rank, really, yeah. evolving from mm-hmm. there. But then we've also got um, these other trust symbols or symptoms, which are things like uh, reviews and social proof. Yeah. So is it important then for like business owners or entrepreneurs or involved in the business to therefore publish content under their own name in order to establish that those eat signals or or maybe the brand or both? I guess we'll start with uh, one. Yeah. Like, like let's say if I, Mr. Plumber, I'm, I'm I don't know about a plumber, but I'm just thinking off the top of my yeah. head. Here. Or or I'm always thinking in terms of local business. So forgive me for that. But or even a home renovation company guy. Like if he's if he wants to like establish his authority as the best home renovation company either in the city or region or country, is it would be beneficial for Eat Signals for him to like publish content on the blog with him as the author and having that content syndicated around the internet and doing press releases? And is that like part of the strategy or am I totally missing the mark here? So not necessarily the syndication part, but but you're okay. on the money in terms of the personality. Sure. So okay. using small business as an example, um, yeah. you're, you're buying the person. You're buying the person yeah. that's solving the problem. Yeah. Um, it's going to be about availability. If I've got an emergency, we'll use plumbing. You've mentioned it. Okay. You know, my my primary criteria might be availability in an emergency. But if I've yeah. got more time, uh, if there's another sort of motive going into my decision there, I'm going to be looking at things like reliability. I'm going mm-hmm. to be looking at things at trustworthiness. I'm going yeah. to be looking at the reviews. In the UK, yeah. we've, got, um, we've got a couple of websites like Trust a Trader or um, uh-huh. Witch or Check a Trade. And these are independent. Um, oh, yeah trade body sort of organizations mm-hmm. that will verify and vet professionals they'll credit check them they yeah. will do the background checks they'll collect oh, wow. all of the independent reviews and compile them so it's 
if I was a, a plumber, um, I'd be making sure that I was collecting reviews from my customers. I'd be yeah. making sure that I was priced competitively and fairly compared to everybody else in my particular area. And I was making sure that those stories was, were told online as well. Yeah. So in other words, to build trustworthiness and just going, I mean, this could apply to, pro, to it's applying to a person of a, um, a, a plumber regards to getting reviews. And I'm assuming that also a part of it would be, I, I know we didn't, syndication isn't part of it, but also sharing that content on social media to give those signals that this is in fact a real person, not just some made up persona that someone's that's, trying to, to. That's, pull that's over. really key. And, and that's, that's, the, that's the hard thing to do. Um, yeah. <laughs> In ter- from from a maths point of view, we could look at yeah. link value. If we were trying to figure out an algorithm, you and I, and we were sure. sat down, we were we were looking yeah. at the ingredients of what what data would prove that this that that Joe blogs over here is a yeah. better plumber than <laughs> Matt Fraser and Nicholas Stott. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's the data that proves yeah. this? So we'd be yeah. looking at numbers. We'd be looking at all sorts of things. The thing, the thing that, that gets harder for an algorithm to work out and what okay. becomes much more sophisticated yeah. is this concept of personal authority and wow. personal trust. And we can get that additional dimension, which is harder to be gained through things yeah. like social media, through yeah. things like having a YouTube channel or a TikTok yeah. oh. Account. Yeah. So when I've just tiled a bathroom because I'm a plumber and I've done a repair and I've done all of this job and I've done put some beautiful tiles in and some chrome Victorian taps, I'm going to TikTok yeah. that and I'm going to yeah. say, look at this amazing handiwork. Just Absolutely. did this five hour job. Da da da. There you go. Yeah. I did this by using this technique, yeah. and that's why I'm going to. You know, it's Absolutely. those sort of things. That extra dimension is harder to gain, and it's. More it is, isn't it? Signal. Even though people still try and do it, but it's hard to do because, like, frankly, you know, someone goes on Facebook and they're trying, you know, <laughs> you're trying to add friends as a fake person. They're, they're going to be, who the hell is this, man? I'm not adding you. I don't even know you. We didn't go to school together. We didn't work together. We didn't whatever together. So, you know, uh, I, I get what you're saying. It's like, you know, gaming the yeah. system by trying to be a fake persona, uh, mm-hmm. not, not, not the best thing to do as a strategy, something probably to avoid. <laughs> It's a waste say. of time, waste of time it's and energy. Time. You're like, like, just be it, be it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> be the thing that you're good at and, and, and you know, yeah. demonstrate what you're good at and why. And if you just get into the habit of doing it, then the rest will naturally fall into place. Yeah. And then I guess, because, yeah, and if they're seeing that this is a real person who's actually talking on video, I mean, I'm glad, so glad you brought up video. Video is such a huge, I think, trend that's going to only grow and grow and grow uh, mm. in that regard you're actually proving that you're a real person. Um, why should anyone care about this though? For, I mean, I mean, it may sound like a very simplistic question, but why should people care? Uh, so, so, why is it important for them to care about this? Do you mean the consumer or the business owner? Yeah, the business owner, not the consumer, yeah. the business yeah. owner, the marketer, if you will. Yeah. So setting aside the, the, the benefits of improved rankings, because obviously, mm-hmm. if you don't have mm-hmm. these symptoms, yeah. you're going to have quality raters sat there looking at your sign going, no, nah, no reviews. That oh. looks crap. Those are all fake. Da, da, da. Okay, or or okay. algorithmically, yeah. that will then, yeah, that's machine yeah. learned and informed <laughs> algorithmically. <laughs> so your site will be throttled or inhibited. Yeah. Aside from just that, you're not going to yeah. convert very well. No, you're not. Are you? so even if I do, yeah. even if I do spam my way to the top of a ranking, and, he, and he, yeah. oh, oh, however, even if I'm ranking for an obscure term and I get a landing because I've paid 20 cents a word for a piece of content that is vaguely <laughs> average, you know, <laughs> when, yeah. when, I, when my potential customer lands on the page, they're just going to go, oh, oh nah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, a, is it, but is eat becoming a signal? Like, is it, is, is Google use eat as a signal for ranking or is it a supplemental sort of deal in your experience? If that makes sense, I hope. I, it does make perfect sense. I would say everything is I mean, eat. 
every yeah, single thing Google have done since Dewey in March 2008, every single update has been about some Eat. form of quality. Yeah. Whether it's, um, you know, Panda, which is all about yeah. duplicate content um, and having the most original content, whether it's about mm-hmm. Penguin, so having, you know, quality links as opposed quality to content volume links. crappy links. Every single update, tuning, whatever – direction has been about yeah. trying to to work out that who came up with the acronym like you'll have to forgive my ignorance even though i've been doing this as i told you off before the show for a long time like who it's hard to keep track of everything like who came up with the eat acronym like did google release it or do you know what who, i don't like, know where did, the, where did the word come from where did the concept I, come from i'm not sure actually well, that's um, fair it, is it look it might come from the quality raters guidelines yeah potentially um i know because we all when when we first saw what might be considered eat uh, we were all calling it medic weren't we i believe so yeah that's what the industry was like oh look we're seeing we're seeing the first signs of of a behavior and I think we were all calling it medic, the medic update, because yeah. it was hitting sites that made claims and that were pushing out content with real, with no lack, with no credibility, no professional qualifications, you know, yeah. T-tox, yeah. how to T-tox your body by drinking this. <laughs> Blah. Who are you to, who are you yeah. qualified oh, to that's, write this and piece that, of, And my know. gosh, that is so important, isn't it? For like, I don't want to read no bull crap article written by someone who's pretending to be something, giving me medical advice yeah, well, about something that they YouTube have, videos. and they have no bloody business doing so. Like, <laughs> exactly. You, you kinda, yeah, you kind of just hit home there because, like, I'll be frank here, or kind of vulnerable. Like, I, uh, I'm 46 years old, and and two months ago I was diagnosed with ADD, and uh, you know, if I'm reading bull crap content put out by someone because you can guarantee that there's certain websites that I only go to because it's like, I know they're an authority on the subject. So I'm not going to read some scammy or what appears to be some article that some moron wrote who's just trying to get some clicks or sell some product or, or whatever the case may be. So gosh, darn it. Is it important? Yeah. But that, we know you, know, you and I know right. because we've yeah. been here, we've seen all sides of this, but yeah. how many times have you said, have you had friends and family that you thought might have been capable of discerning certain things, but they'll come to you and you say, I read this on Facebook the other day, but did you know? And you're like, not you, not you yeah, as well. Exactly. People like me, we put that yes. stuff on Facebook. People yeah. in my industry put that there and they pay yeah. nothing to somebody in a country far away to make that up. You yeah. know, it, it's yeah. that. It, it, the well, it's really, it, in such a lawless place. It's, it's, yeah. um, so it's really important because it's bringing credibility, right? To, to the internet. Credibility, it's making the internet a better place, I would say. Yeah. Well, I guess it's rewarding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. the internet is always going to be some sort of lawless. Well, <laughs> you know. yeah. I mean, there is the dark web, and there is a part of the internet that is not good. But I guess what I'm well, trying to say—that's humanity. But but yeah, yes, yeah, I humanity. guess it's rewarding. It's rewarding authentic authenticity, isn't it? Really? Yeah, absolutely. Um, what are some ways that people can know if they? So, is rankings one of the only indications? Like. What is the first step? Like, okay, so here's this wait a minute. It just says eat can apply to a person. Person, it can also apply to a product. Correct. Um, like it, in yes, yes, I would say absolutely. In as far as that product would be on a landing page. Yeah. So, like, for yeah. instance, like let's just stick with health products, like some kind of supplement. Like you know, mm-hmm. there's ways that you can build eat expertise, authority, and trust around that thing. What are some of the ways that, that you would go about doing that? If, if I'll give you a, for instance, if I could, mm-hmm. let's say it's a glutathione supplement. I'm not sure if you know about glutathione, but it's something that helps your body to, uh, it's in your body and it helps your body. Or we could pick a different subject. We could pick a topic, uh, something that you have worked on previously instead of putting you on the spot because I don't want to do that. But uh, I'm just thinking any kind of supplement, I'll make a three oil. Uh, omega-3 oil is a general supplement that's very good for your brain and so on and so forth. If someone was to say, hey, 
I want to get this product out to the market, but I don't have any heat. <laughs> I don't have any expertise new. You know, what would you suggest to them right off the bat of what, what they should do to have a blueprint, if you will? So that 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 becomes really build that up. That becomes then subject to to local laws and advertising okay. standards sure. um, within individual markets. And I think it's hmm. very, very different to the US as to Canada, oh. as to the UK. Um, but generally it's around things like making claims, making unwarranted claims oh. about the product. Okay. Yeah. Um, which you have to be careful about. You've got to be very careful about that. And in order to make claims about something, it has yeah. to be verifiable, medically backed, a number of studies. I don't know if there's a magic number, but I do oh. know there's a considerable amount of studies that have to be there conducted that back up the claims. They have to be peer-reviewed and verified oh. um, and published as well. So if it was um, if it was a supplement and this supplement was medically proven, to have said effect, then you, you, then you you probably have to also, as a producer of this supplement, invest in your own research that yeah. would extrapolate and say why your formula does what it does. If you're producing yeah. a point of difference, if you're that's the a, if you're the supplier, wow, yeah. and that's so just it, that's just like you said, it's just marketing. And well, those those are those are more than marketing; those are like valid things that should be done. It's yeah, but, it's it's ground up. It's it's yeah, product. It's, 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 yeah, yeah. it's everything. It's everything. And I'm sure, you know, the inventor of the product publishing some articles about it wouldn't hurt, or some press releases being released about the product. Because <laughs> if it's groundbreaking, then obviously you're gonna do some not only release some press uh some peer-reviewed product, but probably gonna release, you know, a press release talking about the product. Absolutely. So, so one, what, you know, if if you do have a product, it is, it's reviewed, it's safe, it's verified, it's cl- it, it is a proven product, um, and its medical claims have been backed up by independent research. That if that part is all done, then yeah, yeah then it's pure marketing. Then it is yeah. just about those classic things like yeah. press releases, like creating a story, um, yeah. getting the product reviewed, yeah. um, testimonials. Absolutely. That's all third party thing. endorsements from doctors. I mean, I imagine, you know, having third party endorsements from other doctors and professionals, peer reviewed, you know, case studies, uh, all of those things are probably of value in, in establishing that. Yeah, absolutely. Though I don't know where the law stands. Um, mm, the, the, yeah. There might be, you know, yeah, I think so we're probably, not giving. There's probably laws <laughs> around compensation in those sorts of situations. Oh yeah, yeah. every type of that. So yeah, just to clear, we're not giving legal advice. So you need to check your lawyer with all those things. <laughs> None of this is legal advice. <laughs> <laughs> so what is your process for auditing a client's site when you're mm-hmm. when you're looking at their their expertise, authority, and trustworthiness? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we actually shared this on um, on Search Engine Land about a week ago. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, we have uh, completely have at it. Uh, if you search, uh, sure. search, search engine, engine land, search, search engine, engine land, land, talk about your thorough process. each audit, Nicola Stott, you know, just something like that, you, you'll find yeah. it. Okay. Um, we have a really, really methodical approach that covers uh-huh. around seven different types of areas. Oh, wow. Um, and then within there, there's a number of different aspects within each of those types of areas. So uh-huh. it'll be things like um, trust marks. And and credibility statements. So that would be in the UK, we would have like the British kite mark. So if you're producing electrical goods, you would have that particular stamp. Um, You could have things like by royal appointment. So uh, on rare occasion, yeah, (laughs) but on rare occasion, your products might be um, approved for use in the royal households. And then you get the Korean stamp on the bottom of your site. Or it might be the BSI, British Standards International, which is a body that looks at if your organisation meets certain standards. So 9001, ISO 9001 is a standard for kind of different types of uh, management structures and that sort of thing. Uh So uh Wow. All sorts of different types of trust and credibility marks that you could have. So that would be one yeah. thing we'd look at. Oh, wow. Um, 
we'd be looking at things like um, structured data and how the site is marked up. Okay. Um, so there's like a depth of understanding algorithmically, yeah. if you mm-hmm. like. Um, there's a number of primary sources that you can use to submit your site um, okay. as you know a piece of structured data as an entity in yeah. order to kind of trigger entity recognition. Mm-hmm, which can mm-hmm. help help you get traction early on if you're a startup. So I'll be looking at things Absolutely. like Wikidata, for example. Okay. Um, Wikidata, you can edit yourself, unlike Wikipedia. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting. How did you come? Like, I've read your article, by the way. And it's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you today about it. How did this process evolve? Like, how long did it, like, it's a, it's a pretty extensive process that you come up with, like, my goodness, I don't think you thought about this in a day, that's for sure, because it's a very sophisticated article and it's a very sophisticated process. Like, how many, how long did it take you to do the, to come up with this? Like, I know you've been doing search for a long time, so. Uh, you know what? Nobody's ever asked me this question before. And um, the answer is actually really quite interesting. Well, I would love to hear because... the answer. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you'd already mentioned I, I, w- I was at Yahoo for, for a spell from 2005 to 2009. Mm. Um Yahoo was always really, it was small in the UK. It wasn't what it was in, in, in North America. Um, mm. and can, you know, I don't know how, how it, the market share was mm. in Canada specifically. I but for the UK, we were at best 12%. But even at 12%, yeah. it was yeah. it was pretty cool to be there okay. at, at, in those days and see that much data and all that. But the reason that, um, the, the point is, one of my roles there was to review websites manually. Oh, uh, two, and I would manually review them to see if they were of the right quality um, okay. to join the Yahoo partner network. Yeah, and we had a process and a checklist of things that we would do to vet the site. Okay, so it, it some of this, some of this like eighty-seven point checklist that we now have today at Erudite started way back in two thousand and five, before wow. Google quality raters were even a thing. Just oh, thinking wow. about what a you know, looking at a website and thinking, is this a legit business? Who the yeah. hell runs this show? What's this <laughs> business wow. called? Can I find them on company's house? Can I do a credit check on them? If yeah. I um do a domain restricted search, can I find adult content on it? Is there Ooh. any reference to weapons? Or you know, would 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 be drilling in, pulling it apart, saying, is it legit? Has it been hacked? Is it a, you know, a proper bona fide yeah. business? Where are the company directors that own this thing? Who are these yeah. people? What are the directorships do they hold? So oh, we'd wow. be going right in under there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it, that's the germ, the germ of the of the seed, if you like. Yeah. So you just mentioned then, something yeah. that I think is so important. Like, you know, I see a lot of businesses don't do this. And it's something you brought up, like having a um, a direct a, a staff directory. Because some people, for Pete's sake, like you want to know who's behind the damn yeah. organization. And it's like I see this over and over again because I'm on the web a bit. Uh, in regards to like seeing your bio on there and seeing the the organizational structure of the company, and you know, linking out to your LinkedIn profile, your Twitter profile. Maybe your Facebook profile, if you mm-hmm. want, or your Twitter at the very least. And and I yeah. see a lot of organizations don't do that. And you're like, why? Like, why are you not? You have to go on LinkedIn to like find them, the person behind this company of who who it is. Do you know what I'm saying? So, do you think that's important that people should do? Is like, it's so important. Is that a part of the on-site signals? It is. It is exactly that. Okay. It is a part of the on-site signals for so many reasons. It's that legitimacy, authenticity, the trust, the legality of it all as an organization. You want to see that these these people are legitimate company directors there, or they are legitimate operators or independent business owners. Um, so that that's part of it. Yeah. First off. Secondly, if you want to own the SERP for your brand, 
you yeah. want more, as much real estate as possible. So if oh, you for search sure. for, for Nicola Stott, you're going to get, I, I haven't looked at it for a while, but you're going to get Erudite, you're going to get me, you're going to get my LinkedIn profile, you're going to get uh-huh. all of these things and they're all joined up together and every single one of them interlinks and references the other. So it's, it's yes. just that, you know, that social graph concept, that connectivity, yeah. that entity is understood. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Doing that, having that, joining that data up, not only explains to Google that uh, Matt Fraser is an entity and this entity, Matt Fraser, is this same Matt Fraser throughout the web because he always talks about SEO and digital marketing, Mm -hmm. Um, but also it allows us to own and connect more of that SERP real estate as well. So someone Googles our name, our business name, we're going to be all over that. Yeah, absolutely. So many benefits. You've got to do it. Yeah. On a side note, uh, there, there's Matt Fraser who's a psychic, and there's Matt Fraser who's an NHL hockey player, and there's <laughs> and this I is CrossFit, a I was CrossFit guy, Matt Fraser. Yeah, I was like, darn... really, Matt Fraser? What's <laughs> it? Do you mean? <laughs> that's such a darn common name. So I have registered the domain name Matt S Fraser uh, dot com in order to try and uh, combat that. Uh, not that I'm doing a very good job at it right now, lack of time, but uh, you know, I, it, that could be a strategy, though, couldn't it? To, to if there's like really popular people out there that have your name that are named the same name as you throwing your middle initial in there in order to differentiate, differentiate yourself from. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. And, and absolutely. brand yourself that way. Yeah, okay. absolutely. I'm lucky that okay. my name's spelt in a slightly unusual way with the, with the H, the Nicola spelt with an H, which is not that common. Um, but yeah, if I, if I had a name that, you know, quite a lot of other people had, then I'd, I'd try and find a little point of difference to help. I would use my middle initial or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay, or, well, glad. you know, Matt the plumber. Uh, you know, you, you, get, yeah. you get a well, lot of that, go. don't oh, you? yeah. So yeah, yeah just Matt add in your, if you're an your independent. Specialty. Or, yeah, yeah, add your specialty well, in. Or if you wanted to like specialize in a specific discipline like uh, Nicholas Dot SEO, mm-hmm. right? Or, yeah international seo or something like that well there yeah. there's a little tip for people if they're trying to like build up their persona and their brand and they're competing with famous people that uh they would never be able to outrank <laughs> you know you can throw in that there so what about off-site reputation signals i mean i know we've talked about some on-site things and i know we probably didn't even talk about them all and that could be like a five-hour episode uh and i would love to have you on the show and talk about more <laughs> But uh, are there any offsite signals that that you've recognized that you, at a high level you could share? Oh, of course, you absolutely. You on yet? I mean, we, we've talked about links. It's always, always, always going to be about links, links and citations. Okay. If people are talking about you, so if we're writing on the web and referencing your brand, or or you are the offices of your company, are the products that you make. Um, yeah. that th- that's that's the game isn't it that's, that's what the, game, we want. the links it's that all about links isn't want. it yeah yeah um branded searches so citation um product plus brand anything like that so the more we can make our product um or brand name synonymous with yeah. a product yeah that is just gold absolutely that's just gold. sheer gold wow yeah 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 and of course wow. there's social signals genuine social signals at, at, at attached to that i wouldn't say so they're not ranking signals per se but the validity of a a trusted profile yeah, yeah. speaks for you mm-hmm. yeah so links are obviously i mean it's interesting that some people and when i say some people some marketers and agency owners i've talked to they don't think well i don't know just trying to think here for a minute how to word my question safely um, I still think links are important and they are important. Um, I just, there's a, there is a uh, divide between whether you get natural links or you go out and get um, links that you acquire through reach outreach, link outreach, you know, and whether you, you, you don't pay for the link because Google doesn't like you to pay for links, but you can pay for the, you know, the, the um, publisher to review your content, your editorial content on their site, <laughs> you know, is getting way around of paying for the link. Uh, you know, we're kind of splitting hairs, so to speak, but 
in order to build that authority, is that that I mean, if you don't have enough links and you you know you can't get them nat- quote unquote naturally from other places, at, at the end of the day, uh, all things being equal, whoever has the most links and authoritative links and relevant links and quality links, that's probably still a deciding factor in rankings from your experience or yeah or, absolutely yeah. It's, it, it, yeah if if two people launch the same business with the same idea um from from position zero i mean you know whatever it's going to yeah. come down to who's got the biggest pr budget yeah so yeah, if we've got absolutely. two identical sites both on wordpress you know the everything else yeah. is a level playing field everything yeah. The person that's going to win is going to be the one with the biggest PR budget, PR budget. not link budget, not no, not at all. PR. Because you know, if we say, okay, you've got uh, you've got um, two hundred fifty thousand dollars, Matt, and you can spend it on yeah. PR. Nicola, you've got two hundred fifty thousand dollars. You can spend it on links. If I go out, and, um, it's going to take me a while to be able to spend that. It's going to take the whole year okay. to get through, and but that's yeah. a lot of work, and I'm just renting that crap. I'm yeah. renting it. Because it's going to yeah. go away. It's going to okay. fade over time. It's not yeah. going to last. And it's a risk. It's a, yeah. it's a house of cards. Yeah. But if you're spending $250,000 on three, four, five really good PR campaigns, that's just going to blow you into the stratosphere. That was a golden nugget right there. <laughs> wow. So, you know, whoever has the biggest budget for PR is going to win. And focusing on that, that there, there are so many aspects, and and I want to just refer people to search. It was on Search Engine Land, right? Or yes, search Engine Journal, Search Engine Land, Search Engine, uh, Land. Search Engine Land for her. You can Google Nicholas Stott Eat Audit, and uh, we'll make sure to put it in the show notes. Is there any other thing? Is there one big takeaway you want people to get from this episode? Um, that maybe we haven't covered. If we've covered it all, that's fine. I just want to give an opportunity that maybe there's something that comes to your mind that. That uh... okay, so I guess here's something that is a little bit difficult. Um, sure, sure. Yeah, we've written. Uh, I've, I've shared our entire audit checklist. Yeah, I wouldn't say that somebody would have to feel they'd go through and they have to pass every single test. Okay. So, so with something like eat, it's not like a yeah. technical audit where, you know, it's you've got a big list of things and all of these things are broken and at some point you really should try and fix them. Yeah. There might be things that just doesn't make sense for you to do as a business. Okay. Um, or, you know, it, it's not that you have to do every single thing and it mm-hmm. can be difficult and that's sometimes what you pay an expert for to support yeah. you with, is to Absolutely. help you find, you know, I've got a hundred gaps. Which which 10 do I pick out and work on first? And do I actually sack some yeah. of them off because they're never going to ROI for me? Yeah. And and then do I look at yeah. something else? So don't oh, feel wow. pressured if you look at if you look at this list and you go, oh my God, we're 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 failing everything. Don't yeah. feel like it's a pressure. Pick things that are really going to drive that difference. And the way to work that out, I'll try and distill like 20 years of SEO knowledge into just a simple sentence. Just put yourself into the mindset of a consumer. Would my mom buy this? You know, think think of somebody that isn't a web expert or, you know, the joke public on the street. Is my partner going to fall for this? Is my, you know, dentist going to buy this? Every normal person, take them through the journey in your mind. Would they come and buy from your site? Yeah. Or even ask them to... You know, ask your mother. <laughs> to pay exactly, me. exactly. Ask, yeah. Mom, would you buy this if you Do, were would my you kid? Trust I was your kid? <laughs> Does this look right to yeah. you? Yeah. yeah. Wow. There's a whole thing we could talk about, about, you know, getting, I know there's platforms out there. I can't remember what they're called, but where you can get people to test your site, but maybe we'll save that for an, a future episode. If you would come back, oh, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here. Thank um, you for having me. If you would come back. That would be awesome. And we could talk yeah, about definitely. more stuff. Uh, how can our listeners connect with you online if they want to? Twitter is always the best way to get hold of me. Oh, sure. at, okay. Um, at Nicholas Stott. Nicholas Stott um, at Twitter. Okay. Yeah, just at me. Give me, give me a holler, and um, sure. yeah, I'm happy to chat to anyone are, about anything. Are you on LinkedIn as well? In case people are on that on that uh, platform. 
I am certainly on LinkedIn. Uh, I do okay. get a lot of um, all sorts going on. Um, so things oh, can get yeah. buried in LinkedIn. Yeah, um, it's pro- I find I, UX yeah. is not amazing. Um, yeah, it's been yeah. around a while. But yeah, Twitch is the most visible way for, me, the most for way. me to see somebody and, and see the conversation. Yeah. Right on. Well, I'm following you on there already. So it's it's all been right. a pleasure having you here. I'll make sure to put those in the show notes. And uh, thank you so much for coming on the show today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Oh, thank you for having me. Right on. You have a great day. Thank you.